you know, shipping a container here, it was it was very stressful. It's like pulling my hair out, man. Like, oh, like, you know, what happened to our stuff? Did someone steal it? Did it fall off the ship? You know, we don't know what's going on. Did they smuggling drugs in it? Man, we have no idea. Come on, it's us, me amigos, bienvenidos. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about shipping a 20 foot container from the US to the Dominican Republic. Now we shipped a container with the equivalent of a three bedroom house. So we had quite a bit of furniture to ship and items and TVs and things of that nature. So we had to get a 20 foot container and the container was just perfect for what we needed. Everything fit, um, there wasn't any room left. So it worked out great. Now I'm gonna give you a total breakdown of the price and the actual process that it took for us to get our container, man, because, you know, shipping a container here, it was, it was very stressful. It's like pulling my hair out, man. Like, oh, like, you know, what happened to our stuff? Did someone steal it? Did it fall off the, the, uh, the ship? You know, we don't know what's going on. Did they smuggling drugs in it? Man, we have no idea. So it was, it was, uh, it was quite stressful, but we got it. So I'm going to give you a breakdown on the whole process, the price and all that good stuff. Now at the end, I'm going to add a video of our trip, just driving to uh, the capital, Santo Domingo. And you can kind of see the layout and the, and the scenery, uh, just going to pick up our, our check. So if you want to stick around and watch that, great. Hey guys, go ahead and click that like button, subscribe, notification bell. Thank you. And if you didn't know, Santo Domingo is the largest city in the Caribbean as far as population wise. Now, after doing a lot of research and Google and trying to find a company that, that looked legit, that didn't look like they were up to something, we finally contacted a company and they gave us a quote on shipping our stuff to the DR. And that quote was $6,995 to ship it to the country here. So that's not the total. That's to bring a trailer to our place in Alabama, you know, take it to the coast, take it to uh, Savannah, Georgia, and to ship it to the Dominican Republic, $6,995. I think we got one cheaper quote, but we got numerous quotes of $15,000, $12,000, so much higher. So that is just the quote that we got and we felt uh, comfortable with. And the process, after the quote, they said to secure your shipping date, you have to pay half up front. So that's half of that. It's like $3,400, something like that. And we had to pay that up front before we even seen a container or anything like that. So, yeah, so it's a little hairy sending that much money to a place that's in Florida that you've never met in person. So, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You feel me? All right. So we sent the thirty four hundred dollars. We got the tracking on it. You know, our, we told our bank about it after that. They scheduled a date for the container to, to be brought to our storage unit where our furniture was at. So, And then they said before the truck comes out, they need the other half of that uh, close to $7,000. And I said, hold on. I hadn't seen a truck. Man, I'm not sending no more money until we see a truck or something. We got to see some type of evidence that, I, you know. <laughs> and so he said, um, okay, he can kind of work with that. And so when the truck got there, um, that's when we emailed him the certified check. When the truck came, we loaded it up and everything seemed to be going as scheduled when the truck came. All right. So that's $6,995. That's before any kind of taxes or customs that we got to pay when you bring in, if you're not a resident of the country, you got to pay you know, import taxes. So that's before any of that $6,995. Now, when we got the quote, they told us that it should take about two weeks for our stuff to arrive in the DR. So that's two weeks from the time they pick it up until it arrives at customs in the DR. So we said, fine, we'll, we'll plan accordingly. So we'll ship it a week before we leave to go to the DR. That way, we'll give it a little wiggle room. So if it comes early, we'll be there. All right, so when the container comes to pick your stuff up, um, we chose the self-loading option. That's where... We pack everything up ourselves. 
when the truck gets there, the container gets there, we load the container ourselves to save money. So we did all that. When the truck got there, we had a few uh, family and friends there help us load it up. We got it loaded. I think they give you a two or three hour window to load the truck. But we got it loaded in about an hour and a half, no problem. I took video of the container number, the lock number, all the good stuff. So two hours, we had it loaded up, ready to go. Okay, so after the container's loaded, makes its way to Savannah, Georgia, sits in Savannah, Georgia for about a week, leaves Savannah, Georgia, and goes to Panama in South America. You know, the Panama Canal. Yeah, it goes down there in Panama. And in Panama, it sits for at least two months or at least 60 days. It sits in Panama. It does not move at all. We don't know what's going on. I'm making calls, I'm getting emails, I'm getting WhatsApp messages saying that, hey, there's a delay, there's an, a week delay, another week delay. It's gonna be two weeks, another week delay. So we're trying to figure out what's going on. They're telling us this and that, that um, they don't have a ship coming to the DR. And whatever the case may be, so it's really frustrating. You don't know what's going on with your container. At a point, you start worrying about uh, your possessions inside the container being locked up and enclosed near the water for weeks and weeks and months. You don't know if your stuff's starting to deteriorate, if you're getting bugs or insects or rodents in there. You don't know what's going on. You know, you have no idea. So it was very frustrating and you don't have your furniture. You know, you don't have your couch. You know, if you don't have any furniture in your place and, you, and you're depending on this container to be there within a week, yeah, you got some choices and some decisions to make, or you just have to deal with it. <laughs> All right, guys, so after two months, the container finally makes its way. We get a notification, hey, it's on its way. It's on the boat coming to the DR, and it arrives in the capital, Santo Domingo. Once it arrives, we were contacted by the shipping company that's here in the DR uh, with a quote on uh, how much we owe for customs, and we have to pay another delivery fee to bring it to the condo. And all this has to be paid before the container is picked up from the shipping yard. If it's left on the shipping yard for uh, after a week or two, you incur, you know, storage fees. So the quote we got to pay the customs to pick it up and to bring it to our condo was $3,427.20. And that has to be paid before you get your stuff. Okay, so we paid it via a wire transfer from our bank here in, in the DR to the uh, shipping company. So you got to make sure you have a bank account set up here before your stuff comes because you have to pay some stuff and you have to receive some stuff. So try to get your account set up prior to all that. Or as soon as you get on the island, try to get it set up, get the information you need beforehand and get it set up as soon as you touch down here. So after we pay the next day or the day after, the company had the container brought to our condo. The delivery people, they unloaded everything out of the container brought it into our condo set everything down nice and carefully they did a great job and i tipped the guys that did it because i think they did a phenomenal job uh, they were on time they kept me informed we were pleased with that part of it and also on um, picking the container up from the customs we didn't have to go down there we didn't have to sign for anything we just paid the the people for the customs and they went down there they signed for everything and they brought it to us so we didn't have to make a trip to Santo Domingo to pick it up, to check it out. And so we really liked that part. And once all the stuff was in the condo, after I was going through it, I found one box that was not ours. It was a pretty good sized box. It was probably the biggest box on the container. And it was not ours. I don't know how I got on there. I don't know if Customs did it. I don't know. But it was from somebody from Chicago. So if you in Chicago, you missing the box. Hey, we got it. So appreciate it. <laughs> no, but we contacted the company. They they brought somebody out. They picked it up. So hopefully that person got their package. So if you're watching and you had a package missing out of your container and you got it, you're welcome. They not them. Okay, so within that thirty four hundred uh, plus dollars, there's a a deposit in there to secure that you're going to return the container back to the shipping dock. So a few days after we got our stuff, the company contacted us and said, hey, you have a refund of $289 and some change. So $289, they've got a check waiting for you in Santo Domingo, at DPH, the ships come in at, they've got a check, check waiting on you, $289. So man, that's amazing. 
I didn't know if I was going to get that money back. But hey, they kept the word. They gave us our money back for the container getting back to the yard. So about a week later, we make our journey down to Santo Domingo. We get to DPH and we, we go through the gate. Someone helps us find an office where to pick the check up. We go and pick it up and they give it to us in pesos. It was 14,000 pesos. In my calculations, we should have got a check for 15,106 pesos. But I guess at the exchange rate, they use, you know, it's not to our benefit. So, <laughs> so we didn't get quite the 289 US dollars, but we did get 14,000 pesos. So that's um, at the exchange rate now, that's roughly about $260. Uh, hey, I'll take it. We got some money back. So I'm not complaining, but it could have been better. I mean, come on now. I mean, I, I know the exchange rate. So, <laughs> and when you get inside the gate of the uh, DPH, the office to get your check is about 100 yards or 30 something meters on the left hand side. This is a key note down there at DPH, you're not really allowed to wear shorts for men, you know, or probably women too. But I went to one office, I didn't know where I was at. I was trying to find some information, trying to see if someone can help me or help us. And so I went in there and at the door, and the guy was like, No, bada bada bada, you know, I didn't know what he was saying. My Espanol is not, it's not great, it's, it's no bueno. So, uh, but the guy kept saying, and then the first, she was like, okay, maybe it's the shorts. You know, there was like no shorts allowed inside. I don't know why. I have no idea why my cargo shorts were not allowed. But that wasn't the office anyway. So the same gentleman proceeded to walk us and show us where the office was to receive our refund at. And apparently at that office, I guess they don't allow shorts either. But he let me slide. He let us in, man. And Show the passport. You got to show the passport. Get your check. Got the check. Man, it was all good. Came back. Cashed it. We were told it was going to take 14 days for our stuff to arrive. It was probably over 70 when our stuff finally came and, and got in the condo. So it was uh, it was very stressful for some more than others. But the companies that we use, they did a great job. They kept us informed. You know, they explained to us when it was in Panama, there was really nothing that they could do. They were just waiting on a, a ship to come that way. So they kept us informed, but it's not really what I was wanting to hear at the time, you know, because <laughs> if we if this was going to be the case, we would have shipped it two months early, right? Instead of a week early. Hey, guys, we're going to Santo Domingo. There are some tow booths in between. Um, if you're coming from Bahia Bay or Punta Cana, you're going to have some tow booths going to Santo Domingo. So... If you're driving, just take some pesos, take 600 pesos for a round trip, you should be good. I'm going to put a little video up of just driving. Now, the video is shaky. Yeah, it's a little shaky, but put a video of the drive from Bahia Bay, Santo Domingo, past the District National area, Santo Domingo. Then we're going to go to DPH, where the container was. So, guys, thanks for watching. Remember to watch out for coconuts. Peace.
Thank you.